You may have seen a river otter being released during the Missouri Department of Conservation's reintroduction program. You may even have seen one in the wild. But you've never seen one like this unless your biologist, filmmaker, and otter father, Glenn Chambers. This is deja vu for Chambers. He's raising his second pair of baby otters for use in films and educational programs. And this is just an ordinary day in his life. They do take over your life. They're, they're a dominant force in, in driving what happens in, in, in your life once you take these animals as a commitment. And they're a major commitment, there's no question about it. Uh, this morning I was up uh, at quarter of five. Uh, they, I could hear them in here, they were already playing in their box. They were squeaking and playing with each other in, in the box. Then right away they went back to sleep. So around six-ish, uh, I began to scurry around with them down here, begin to wake them up. I go either mix food or have it already mixed, put it in the microwave, warm it up. Then uh, I feed them, feed them by hand. In the wild, otters live on fish and crayfish. But for some reason, in captivity, that diet doesn't agree with them. Right now, at this age, these animals are on uh, a diet. It's, it's a pretty, pretty exquisite one. It's uh, veal scallopini with the meat market. We have it ground four times, so it's just like pulverized. We run mink meal through a uh, blender, and then we sift it, and then we mix tomato juice with that and cod liver oil. And each of these animals eats a pound and a half of that every day. And keep in mind, veal scallopini is something like $7 a pound. And then I put them in the rec room and let them play there. While they're playing, I vacuum this place, put in fresh uh, kitty litter in their litter box. Uh, rearrange your toys, clean up everything. Uh, by that time, they've had 30 minutes of good play, and they're usually ready for a nap. The otters take an extraordinary investment of time and money. They require the full range of inoculations for dogs and cats. You have to have special permits to keep them, and the pups are $1,000 a piece when you can get them. These animals were born in captivity. The Conservation Department does not believe in taking baby animals out of the wild and making pets out of them. We get them when they're tiny, and socialize them like you're seeing here so that we can take and do programs with them, like do films with them. Of course, the major concern when you first get a baby otter is to begin the imprinting process where these animals will know me so that I can take them into the wild. And they'll be unrestrained and then we can do underwater photography. I'll sleep with these animals from anywhere from six weeks to, to uh, three months, uh, depending on how the imprint's going. In 1989, as cinematographer for the Department of Conservation, Chambers imprinted a flock of geese for a movie. This time, every step of the imprinting it and baby raising out. process is documented for his current project, a National Geographic film on North American river otters. Glenn's a uh, very unusual person. He is uh, one of probably uh, you know several people in the country and in the world that uh, that have worked with young otters to any extent. So he's perfect for this film. It's just as much a story about uh, Glenn as it is about the otters. Baby otters, believe it or not are really afraid of water to begin with. They know the basics. They have to be encouraged to get in the water. And once you make the transition that this water is a wonderful place, then they're off and running. These otters seem tame. They're cute, comical, and charming but they're not pets. Uh, you know, these animals are, are, are vicious animals. And as they get older, they get more aggressive. And when they're at this age, they're fine. But the older they get, the more difficult they are to work with. They don't like to be held now. They don't like to be petted. And, and as they get older, they graduate more into the independent mode. I have scars right there and, and big red marks on the back of my hands from, from otter bites. I get otter bitten probably about once a week. Otters are, uh, 
are, are an aquatic carnivore. They're in the weasel family. Uh, they have scent glands and they can really, really squirt and really, really stink. It, it isn't as nasty as a skunk, but it's pretty bad. So why does he do it? I've learned more by being with them, by swimming with them, by watching their behavior, and I've learned some things uh, that aren't even in the books about otters. I go to the bottom with them and watch what they're doing down there and filming, and that's a payoff for me because these animals at that stage of the game are acting and behaving like wild otters. They're chasing fish, they're catching crayfish, they're doing things otters do, and that's really pretty neat because you know, people nice in literature time. don't report things like that because they never see it because they're never down there with them. Their most ambitious part of the day is playtime. They really enjoy living life. They're a perfect example of the way we as people should, should behave a lot of times.